boys and girls. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. This is the one and only Azokar. Bragging you flame. You already know. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You'll be left in the loop every time your boy drop the work. You feel me? Shout out to the black YouTube out there. Take a TV. Paul Sino. Kwame Brown, the legal attorney. J.R. Wisdom. Mr. Palmer. Too raw for sports. Too raw for TV. Kick it in with Mr. Moss. LC Predator Catcher. J.D. Black. Tariq Nasheed. Dr. Umar Johnson. I-C-P-K-N-O-I. Hold it down. On these two streets. And all praise is due to Allah. For the Honorable Elijah Muhammad leaving. That's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? And in all these great ones I call before you, I bow to them. Saying what it do. What it do. Boy, I tell you, man. This NFL roller coaster my team has been on, it's been a roller coaster. I have really, my nerves has been on edge. If you're a 49er fan, you're, yes, your nerves been on edge. Yes, I don't want to hear that. You know, I understand. I'm seeing all the little celebrations online. That's that's fine, that's dandy, but you cannot deny that your nerves is on edge. Getting it on out the way. This is going to be a PBS teaching moment. Yes, this video is going to be a teaching moment. Not to put all your eggs in one basket. And talk that talk, that crazy talk, when you talk it, when you been in your feelings. Mm, 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 mm. Well... So people had to eat their words these last past two weeks. And now I'm talking about I was holding up. First of all, make sure y'all subscribe to The Craig Show. The K-R-U-E-G Show. Craig Show. 49 up here, I believe, on the West Coast. And I got turned on to his video Due to me being a fan. And see, that's how that AI kind of crap work up on that YouTube. You probably could talk about your team or they can hear your team through the phone. And next thing you know, it's on your videos. But I right, let me go to another subject. I'm going to keep it right back cooking. Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark, man, went through a phase. <laughs> One could say it's a hypocrite phase. One can say that. One can say he went through a hypocrite phase. On his commentary. Talking about the 49ers. I giving them their flowers at the beginning of the year. Or what not. How they play and how they execute. And then he goes to say this. You know, I believe this is the before the playoffs. Wait, look, what chance would you give Purdy versus Lamar or Mahomes? And we already know how that went out. But just listen to listen to this, y'all. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you should always speak humbly with your opinions. Be fair. Never be emotional. But he kind of contradicted himself, man, when he said this right here. I want you to listen now. I'm about to um, make a confession. Mm. The single hardest thing I had to do this year was act like Brock Purdy deserved to be in the conversations with the other people we're mentioning in that tweet. Now, I say he said he had to act. So you tell him you're not giving your true assessment on television. So right there, you already, your credibility is gone, Ryan. I'm sorry you did this, not me. I'm just a little old fan. I'm just a fan. Don't, don't get mad at me. These is your actions. These is your words that came on national TV. I didn't do this. 
PBS. Because he was playing extremely well and operating in that offense and distributing the ball to Kittle and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, we had to continue to include him in conversations with the Lamar Jacksons. We had to continue to include him in conversations with the Josh Allen. Those things are not alike. Brock Purdy is a fine player. Brock Purdy can operate in Kyle Shanahan's offense at an extremely efficient level. Brock Purdy doesn't raise the level of play of anyone around him. And so when you talk about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, the people around them benefit from having those sorts of players at the quarterback position. Brock Purdy benefits from having the sort of players he has at the skill positions around him. And so when we look at that game against the Green Bay Packers, even with Jordan Love throwing an inopportune, inexplicable interception to end the game, I was sitting there watching them going, man, the world should be, the NFL world should be excited that Jordan Love doesn't play for the San Francisco 49ers. And we are starting, at least in my opinion, to get into the realm the San Francisco 49ers used to be with Jimmy Garoppolo where it was, yeah, with Kyle Shanahan calling plays, we could be really good. With the players around him, we could be really good. But can our quarterback take us to the next level? And now that it's getting down to the critical football moments, to the moments that turn good players into legends, that turn good teams into teams we never forget, you're starting to see. You don't take Brock Purdy over Jared Goff right now. And you for sure don't take Brock Purdy over the two dudes on the other side in the AFC. So if you're the San Francisco 49ers, you're thinking to yourself right now, this team that we were starting to run through our quarterback better run through Uncle Shannon's nephew, Christian McCaffrey. Because if it doesn't, they're going to find themselves at home again without a ring. All right, so that was Ryan Clark. No, he's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Josh Allen. Guess what? They at home. They at home. Oh, Ryan Clark, man. And you benefited from playing from a system. So why would you even go there, dude? I, I, I'm a fan. So let me tone my emotions down. Fans going to be emotional. You better believe that. Ah, it's just damn, Ryan Clark. You taking some L's, homie. You taking some L's. You taking some L's. Lord, have mercy. Now, this is... Everybody was saying this. A couple of other people were saying this too. Jared Goff is a better quarterback than your boy Brock Purdy. Now you heard him. Ryan Clark, hey, don't get mad at me, man. They just cut, chopping and screwing your words, homie. Just chopping and screwing your words. We're going to come in here Monday morning. What are you, what's the first words going to be out of your they're mouth? Going, they're work? going to do it because the one thing we don't talk about with the Lions enough is how well coached they are. Oh. We want to talk about biting kneecaps. We want to talk about biting faces off, as you heard, Aaron Glenn. What this team does with Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn is they find ways to utilize who they have on their team as well as anyone in the entire league. When Brad Holmes drafted Jameer Gibbs at 12, I was like, what the hell are we doing? And then when he went and got Brian Branch, and then when he went and got Sam Laporta, I said, oh, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And now you look at the way this team uses every single piece they have. They're very similar to the San Francisco 49ers offensively. And now defensively, it's about pressure. They'll give up yards, they'll bend, they won't break, and they want to turn you over. I believe there comes a point in this game where it's going to say, is Jared Goff more prepared for this moment and ready for this moment, or is Brock Purdy? And I think Jared but Goff is going to be the guy that's ready for the moment. We've... All right.
Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not going to act like they just ran through everything like a hot knife through butter. No. Nerves still on edge, but it's a more relaxed state because I wanted this rematch. Ain't no nervousness to me no more. No, I want this motherfucking rematch. You better fucking believe it. Any Niner fan want this motherfucker. You ain't going into it with no uncertainty. No, we want this motherfucker. Stand up, Niner Nation. Niner Nation, Niner Gang. And this is, this is, this is, this right here. Once again, Ryan Clark, his words, his words, his words after Purdy, after Purdy beat the Lions. His words after Purdy beat the Lions now. <laughs> Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Here we go. Here you go. Moving the goalposts, man. Ryan Clark. This y'all boy now. This y'all boy. This is what we listen. This is what y'all listen to on the morning. ESPN. And then he's talking about he had to pretend. So they all these people on here, they very suspect. You can't listen to their opinion. I mean, you can listen to it, but just like I can't trust it because you faking. When you look at what Brock Purdy was able to do. Brock Purdy has separated himself from Dak Prescott. Brock Purdy has separated himself from Tua Tagovailoa. Brock Purdy has separated himself from guys like Kirk Cousins, from guys like Justin Herbert. He was asked in the most pressurized moment to be the best he could possibly be. And you know what magnifying glasses do, right? Think about this, huh? You, you know, you in the club, right? You vibing. And she got on makeup, you know what I'm saying? She got her good weave in, her good wig on, and yeah. then the lights come on, right? You know what the lights do? The lights yeah. show the imperfections, right? Some of them scatter, and some of them walk closer to you. When when they were looking for Brock Purdy's imperfections, he got closer to him. Take Brock notes, Purdy notes, Miles, became more of himself. He used his legs. He played above <laughs> the X's and O's. Brock Purdy, in my opinion, if I'm looking at those two games Saturday... Brock Purdy did what we would have expected Lamar Jackson to do. Brock yeah. Purdy trusted himself. We agree with Brock that. Purdy put the football where it was supposed to be. Brock Purdy won the football game. Down 17. Well, there you have... Man, you, you see this shit? You see this? I was wrong. They said saying I was wrong. Man, this is your boy Moose Doom Vibe. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. And let's go. San Fran. Cisco. Let's do this, baby.